Well, thank you, Wanda, as always, and um, so good to see all of you here this morning. Um, you know, you've made uh, you made about the best decision that you can for a Sunday morning in general to uh, come out and worship God, but especially as we um, meditate on, think over, and celebrate His resurrection. I finally got this side of the church quieted down a little bit where I could be. <laughs> anyway, I have a thank you note from C, B, K, and J. Does anybody know who that is? Think about it. Yeah. Cindy, Becky, Kim, thank you, and, and Jennifer. So Faith Fellowship. Words cannot express the thanks for all the help with the funeral meal to all of the wonderful people of Faith Fellowship, Love, CBK, and J, the Leonard Haynes family. So, and that was great being able to, again, we had a crew of like 10 ready and ready and willing for service, and that was just very good. Uh, what a beautiful day, but more so um, to come out to worship our God to hear his word preached to us. Uh, a few announcements. We have a um, board meeting at 9 tomorrow. Jeffrey Rod will be preaching next Sunday in our AM service. Uh, no evening service next week. No <coughs> evening service tonight. Men's study, May 1. Uh, board meeting, May 8. Um, we have our impromptu choir singing today. And what that is, for those of you who might not know, we haven't practiced, we pick a familiar song. So if you would like to join us in our impromptu choir this morning, we are going to sing Near the Cross. Should I get those sheets ready? Uh, yeah, you might just grab those and have those on hand. And um, uh, any other announcements I need to bring our attention to today? Okay, uh, prayer needs, we want to, um, it's good to see uh, Steve and Janet back safely. Hopefully you had a good trip back Friday. I imagine that was a long trip, but so very good to see you back. Had a really good visit with Jeanette on the phone yesterday. And uh, she's uh, something else. She just keeps, you know, just battling the Parkinson's and... Um, just got such a good spirit about her. That happens though, um, the person that you know walks with God. God tends to do that for us. And I almost forgot that we have um, Minnie Pearl's husband with us here today. <laughs> Randy came in, got a brand new shirt on, and Sally's like, well, you, Randy, you still got the tag on it, but. <laughs> Linda, Linda had a pair of scissors, so she saved the day. Since I was picking, since we're picking on Randy a little bit, he forgot the Good Friday service. He, I talked to him, and he's very apologetic and repent, repentant. But um, I, I was teasing him. I said, "Well, I was wondering if I needed to give you a call this morning, remind you we're having church this morning." But um, I guess that wasn't necessary. So, I. I don't pick on everybody, just those I know that won't get too upset with me. I see we have, uh, we, we got more rolling in the door. Is it you invite people to come and then you don't show up? Yeah. Did you see, did you see behind you there? Huh? Did you see back here? You about... Oh, oh my God! <laughs> you need to go sit with them. <laughs> Mother, Mother Linda. Yes. Thank you, Mother. You're welcome. Um, we want to keep Donna as uh, healing in her. Is it both hands or just the one? Just one. Just the one hand, healing in her hand. What other uh, prayer requests uh, do we want to come in late and then go around hugging everybody? You know, and, that's okay. Yes, Randy. Uh, a phrase note. Praise no. Kelly could hear. She got her hearing aids. Love them. Oh, isn't that great? Uh, and I go down uh, Wednesday for a treat. I leave home about four o'clock. Yep. 
My driver's going to pick me up. So. Got the big day this week. Yeah. You said, said Wednesday, right? Yeah. Leave at like 4 in the morning. 4.10. Yeah, so... But having them provide that ride service is just great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we. Yeah. Okay. And and I know there's yes, Rich. Connie. Thank you. Yeah, Connie. Uh, well, at, as of yesterday, had not heard back yet from the doctors. So we need to pray that uh, they will um, figure out what's going on and what steps they're going to take next in um, getting her fixed up her heart problems. Okay, I know there's many more needs. You can bring those quietly before the Lord as together we approach His throne of grace as I pray and pray for the things I might forget also. So, Heavenly Father, we come to You this morning and I know my, my thoughts are kind of scattered and I just ask You would just draw me before Yourself and push everything else away and I'm probably not the only one that uh, we just need to um, allow you to bring us to a place of quietness and worship that we can know the Holy Spirit of God moving in our midst, uh, drawing our attention to the things that uh, we should have our minds and our hearts on. We do bring up these various requests with um, Connie and uh, just uh, a good solution for her heart problem, a good direction with that for continued healing, for uh, Donna's hand, um, just Randy's uh, trip to, uh, Randy and Kelly's trip to uh, St. Louis on Wednesday. Uh, continue to bless those treatments. We thank you what you've done thus far with that. We praise you for uh, the hearing aids that Kelly has uh, working out so well. And uh, we know the, the difficulty that can be and people struggle with that. So praise you for that. We thank you for the work that you're doing in Steve's life and just continued watch care over him and Janet through this process of treatments and traveling and, and all of these things. Now, Lord, with all of us, our various concerns, just help us to, to, be, to walk closely to you uh, so that we might know your great love, that we might know your great mercy, your care for us, your, your shepherding of us. And we praise you for this. Now lead us, continue to lead us in worship this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, all. We shall sing Christ the Rose 357. Please stand.
shall sing, He Lives, 368. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way.
and praise to His name. Let us pray again. Mighty God of all, we, we prayed earlier that you would draw us into worship before you, that you would quiet the world around us and have our thoughts on you, bring us into the quiet place of the presence of God where we can hear you very clearly. We thank you for doing that and we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would continue that work in our hearts and minds. Bring us before these words of truth this recounting of the most powerful event ever to happen on this earth, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. We thank you for this time together. We pray that you would speak to each one of us, press these things deeply into our hearts and minds that we would be changed people. Yes. We love you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't be afraid ever. That's a thought that came to my mind as I read our text. The resurrection of Jesus, Son of God, had occurred before the women arrived. And those of you who were here for our Good Friday service know we're kind of continuing with this faithful group of women who followed and served Jesus Christ. Now they've arrived, but the events, the, the, the resurrection has already occurred. But the events surrounding the resurrection were of such a supernatural and powerful nature. They were so far beyond the boundaries of normal that all those who witnessed the events were stunned with a great fear. But these faithful women who were looking for Jesus would soon have a very changed perspective. They had already realized their greatest fear two days earlier, previously, on a cross outside of Jerusalem. Just ask them, if you could, the one who they had served and followed, the one who they thought was the Messiah of God, had died on a cross. But now through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, their greatest fear has been soundly and forever defeated. And now as those who follow Jesus, <clears throat> they need fear nothing ever again. And they were told by the angel, stop fearing. Stop looking for Jesus dead in the tomb. Come see. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. He had told them multiple times. These women now, they have the same victory that Paul proclaims in 1 Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The same victory that we have today as believers in Christ. We return to Matthew's account of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, Son of God, and find our faithful women at the open tomb of their resurrected Lord. I'm going to read our text, and you've got this on the first front of your study sheet. Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as white as snow. And the guards quaked from fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. 
And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and report to my brothers to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. These faithful women were still reeling from the crucifixion of their Lord two days prior on Friday afternoon. But they lived by a very important principle that they had learned from the Lord Jesus himself. When in doubt, follow Jesus. When afraid and confused, follow Jesus. When you don't know what else to do, are we following the pattern? Follow Jesus. Always follow Jesus. They didn't know what was going on, but they did what it's in their hearts to do to follow him, even if it meant following to where his dead body was laying, lying in a tomb. John 12, 26 tells us, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. <clears throat> we might ask ourselves, am I a believer in Jesus Christ? Are these, is this hope, is this the hope that I can hold to? Do I truly know him? Well, here's a question we can ask. Do you follow Christ? We might ask, how do we do that? We follow him through his word, through obedience to his, through his word, through his spirit. And that person says the father will honor him. I think the father honored these women on this early morning. John 10, 27 tells us, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. See, this is what, if you're one of his sheep, this is what you do. You don't have an occasional connection. We, we follow him. Now, it's interesting here, too, because in this verse, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. Do you remember what he told to the group of church people in Matthew 7? They came to him saying, Lord, Lord. And then they were listing all the things that, that they were doing in his name. What did he tell them? I never knew you. I never knew you. That means they weren't part of, they had never truly trusted in him. They appeared on the outside to know him. They thought they knew him. They knew a Jesus. They didn't know Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But this, his sheep who follow him, he said, I know them. It's a wonderful thing to know that God knows you. God knows me. God knows you if you believed in him, received his gift of life, forgiveness of sins. And in following Jesus, they would eventually come to discover what the apostle discovered, the powerful reality of what happened on that afternoon. See, they followed him. <clears throat> they couldn't figure, they were just completely bewildered. We thought he was the Messiah of God. But the, the, uh, the apostles didn't get it until this time either, until after the resurrection. But what happened then, they did, they could look back and they understood now what happened on Friday afternoon. And what happened on Friday afternoon, well, that was the power of God for salvation. What that appeared to be was envious, wicked, jealous, religious leaders unjustly murdering Jesus on a cross. In reality, it was the power of God for salvation. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This also, what happened on that afternoon, was our righteousness in the making. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We all could have our moments of doubt and we have to come back to the words that God has spoken to us in the scriptures because we could all feel at times how could God look at me like I'm a righteous person I know the things my thoughts my words some of the things I do how could God and we come back to the words of scripture here's how that could happen this is what happened on that cross on Friday afternoon he made him who knew no sin to be, our, to be sin on our behalf. He took care of our sin problem. 
All we can do is believe in what he has done and continue to trust him. So anyway, these women, they followed Jesus right up to the tomb. They had been through all of the things on Friday. They had prepared spices. They had honored they had honored the Sabbath, and now they're back, Mark, Matthew 28, verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. We can't be completely sure why they came to the grave. We know they came to look at the grave. We do know that much. It's very possible that they came to look at the grave. They probably were coming because they brought the spices to further prepare his body. And, just, and maybe to hope against hope. I... I, like We don't want to get too far off into speculation. But something had stirred into their heart. They had followed Jesus. And they, they even though they knew they were coming to the tomb, expecting him to be dead in the tomb, and yet something just wasn't right. Something had not clicked yet. And that was, to, even though he had told them, he said just as he said, but even though he had told them, uh, they just, they, maybe they did. They hoped against hope. I believe they had. Luke 23, verse 55. Now the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and beheld the tomb and how his body was laid. Then after they returned, they prepared spices and perfumes. This is previously. And on the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. That was before. And now the, in, the, in Matthew 28, 1, now they've come Sunday morning to the tomb. Whatever their reasons, they came to the grave to show their love for the Lord by caring for his dead body. So what a wonderful surprise to find an empty tomb and an angel announcing to them that he has risen. Matthew 28, 2. I know we read this already, but I want to read it again and make comment. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. There is some discussion on the earthquake and the moving the stone and rolling it away and that as to the sequence of events. But the best explanation seems to be that the angel arrived and his arrival, this majestic supernatural being, shook the earth. And if you can just picture then what happened. He rolled the stone away, flipped it over on its side, and he sat on it, pronouncing victory. Now, as I said earlier too, he wasn't rolling the stone away to let Jesus out. Jesus was already resurrected. He rolled the stone away, as he's going to tell them shortly, to come and see he's not here. Verse 4, And the guards quaked from fear of him and became like dead men. Now, notice something that the angel did not tell the guards, do not fear. Do not be afraid. They had every reason to fear. And they, they passed dead away. The angel answered, the, answered and said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. They were followers of Jesus. They're, Where is Jesus? We know he was, but he said, he is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come see the place where he was lying. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Because these faithful women followed and served the Lord Jesus, they were, one, they were the first ones to witness the empty tomb. They would be the first to announce his resurrection. And they were the recipients of the very first message from God delivered to the followers of Jesus after the resurrection and that very first message that was delivered to them and through them to the apostles and then to us was do not be afraid he is not here he has risen and um, there's been speculations of why the women were rewarded in this way were they rewarded because um, just their, their faithful service. Or there's some that had a theory that, well, Eve was the one who was tempted and brought the fall of mankind on. So maybe now they thought it was fitting that it would be the women then who made this announcement of victory over death, of victory of our Savior. But I was on my bicycle and I was going to uh, the John MacArthur School of the Bible while I was on my bicycle listening to a message in Matthew 28 
and he's going over some of these various theories. And as he's prone to do, he said, he said, now, he said, I'll tell you, he said, I'll tell you why this happened. And so, and I'm on the front row and I'm waving my hand because I think I've got the answer to what he's going to say when he says, I'll tell you, not the speculation, but I'll tell you why they were the first ones to witness the tomb, why they would be the first to announce the resurrection, and why they heard the first message delivered by God after the resurrection. And he said, because they were there. And I, I got a gold star because I had, because that's what I, that's what I was saying. Because he's asking this, and it's always good when you agree with John MacArthur, or well, usually anyway, or almost always. But I'm like, because they were there. We can see they, they followed. They followed Jesus. The reason they, this happened is they followed him. That's what those who've trusted in Christ do. We follow him. Sometimes just being there is what we need to do. Just being there is what we need to do. The angel said, do not do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. So what did these women do? Well, they did what you would expect for faithful followers. They were given instructions, so what did they do? They obeyed the instructions they had been given, and they left the tomb quickly. Verse 8, And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to report it to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met, <clears throat> met them and said greetings, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and report to my brothers to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. And you see it again, then the angel told them these, these amazing events. And the angel had said, don't be afraid. Now Christ is telling them. This is the first message. Of course, they're going to announce the resurrection. But because of the resurrection now, do not be afraid. And in fact, our Greek scholars will tell us what they're saying there with the Greek tenses. And that is to stop fearing. Stop fearing. We don't have to be afraid of anything. Yes, we will still have our moments of fear and just the different things that go on from living in this sin-fallen planet. But we have under our feet, the rock solid under our feet is this. We do not have to be afraid ever again. We have good reason to not be afraid ever of anything based on the saving work of Jesus Christ on a Friday afternoon outside of Jerusalem in ancient Israel and culminating with his resurrection on that Sunday. When everything is overwhelming us, we always know follow Jesus, go to the word of God. That's where we find, that's where we find our answers. And I'm going to read, it's, it's more extended. You have at the end of your notes, the first two verses, I'm going to read Romans 8, 31 to 39 before we pray. What then shall we say to these things if God is for us who is against us? He who indeed did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather who was raised. See, there's Friday afternoon to Sunday morning right there. Rather who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will affliction or turmoil or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, just as it is written, for your sake we are being put to death all day long. We were counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Did we hear that? No matter what it seems like, how things are going, we know that if you believed in Jesus Christ, what is the gospel? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That we know that no matter how things seem to be going in our lives, personally, 
in our families, in this world, in our country, in the world, no matter how it seems, what we know because God tells us very clearly. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Mighty One, we uh, thank you for speaking to us this morning. And uh, we thank you for your words of truth. We, we thank you that we can know reality if we look to you, if we bow before you, if we trust in you. Pray that each person here has that relationship with Jesus, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That we understand the impact, the forever impact, the power that happened on Friday afternoon the same power that you raised him from the dead on Sunday morning. Pray that you've spoken to our hearts, Holy Spirit of God, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I did tip off Lee. I don't know if I tipped anybody else off, but after we got a song, and then we have uh, Ted is going to pray, and then after that, I'd like for us the very last thing to sing Amazing Grace. We so. shall stand and we shall sing. Oh, you're already standing. Okay, good job. <laughs> when I survey the wondrous cross. Oh, yes. the very very last ending special ending we will not do that okay glory 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 to the lamb glory 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 to the lamb for he is glory the throne and all 
Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that your son lives today. We thank you that he was willing to die on a cruel cross for us. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself was truly a miracle. And it reveals the great power, Father. We thank you for how you how you are sovereign, how you how you lead us. We pray that you would help us to trust Jesus and follow him and obey your commandments. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. Thank you for caring for us. And the end of Matthew 28, it says that we are to make disciples of others. And I pray that you will help us to do that, help us to have the courage and boldness to speak to others about our living Savior. And we thank you, Father, for your, for your, uh, for this day. Thank you for bringing us out here today. And we have many concerns that we've lifted up to you. We pray that you'll answer them in, in your timing. Just pray for your guidance, Father. We need you. We love you. And we're so thankful for, uh, for Jesus Christ and how he, uh, how he made our uh, salvation possible through his death on the cruel cross. Pray in Jesus' name. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you. 